Hello guys, so I've been working on this rig. This is not a grease pencil rig, it's created using meshes. It's a low poly 2D modeled character with just green pencil line art. You can see that it supports shadow, it supports also shape keys, and it has a lot of cool features. I will do a demo video about this guy here and maybe a course later about the creation and the rigging of this character. But today we will talk about compositing. So when I finished this animation, I created this effect here just for fun. And then I thought that maybe a lot of people uh, never used the compositor, just like me. I only used it recently and it was like a scary word. So I thought to make a simple tutorial to demystify the word and the concept for you guys. I would be thankful if you checked my files on Gumroad. There are some paid files there. You can buy one or two to support my work here on the channel. And also every file there is connected to a free tutorial on this channel. So even if you don't buy the file, you can follow the tutorial and make your own wonders. So here we are with a default file in Blender with the default cube and a default camera in a default position. Let's hide the cube for now by hitting H and then create a plane. Hit N. I think I'm gonna select my plane and then shift select the camera and then we go here right click on one of these values here the rotation values copy all to select it so this way the plane is rotated just like our camera then we will select the plane and then hit G and then we will need the Y the local Y of this plane I think I'm gonna hit Z two times yes this is the axis we want to get the plane further from the camera so like this so that's it doesn't overlap with our cube now we can unhide our cube i guess and then we go to camera view zero on the keyboard you can see the square of our plane here let's go to edit mode tab and then a i think i'm gonna hit this guy toggle x-ray so we can see our plane here and then resize s resize s again and x to resize on the x axis now it should be the local x of the plane so we hit x again yes this is the local x of the plane go to object mode the plane fills the camera and we want it to be our background to do that we need to parent it now to our camera so we select the plane we select the camera Control p set parent to object so this way every time the camera moves the plane moves with it and we have a fixed background for our our cube very nice let's add a texture to our plane so we go to shading we select the plane only we hit new to create a new material let's delete the bstf shift a s to search type in emission we select the emission we plug the emission to the surface and then from the color get a line like this we release the mouse and type in image yes image texture from the vector, we search for mapping, so a mapping node. And then from the other vector, we get a texture coordinate, COO for coordinate. And instead of generated, we choose object like this. And then we look for our texture. Here it is. So this texture was created with the Dream Texture plugin, free Blender plugin. We change the scale of this texture to 0.2 I guess like this let's go again to the layout let's add a blank grease pencil object go to modifier properties and add a line art modifier we choose an object if you have multiple objects use collection the object is the cube the layer we have one layer in our grease pencil object and the material is this black stroke here let's disable overlays and you can see we have these thin lines let's make them a little bigger and then i want to add a noise modifier let's lower the position add a little bit of strength and a little bit of thickness randomness increase the noise scale and you can see that we still have straight lines we don't have too much noise and that's because we don't have enough geometry in our cube that's why we will add a subdivision surface modifier to our cube and not to our grease pencil and then instead of cutmel clark 
that we turn our cube to a sphere we will use simple so that we keep the shape of our cube and the levels we will put in three in viewport and three in render go to grease pencil we don't want this layer to use lights we don't want anything to be affected by light not the background that's why we use the emission shader for the cube we don't need to worry about the cube because it won't show in the final render let's do a little animation the first animation will be with the camera so let's select the camera let's hit in and go to view camera to view enable view navigation within the camera view i have shift k as a shortcut i think it's a custom shortcut so let's enable this let's move it a little bit to the left like this shift move it like this and then i will hit um, i location and rotation to add the keyframe to frame number one and then i go to frame number 40 and move the camera to the other side like this i think i'm gonna enable this guy here auto key in so let's add the keyframe again i location and rotation and now we have this animation let's stop at frame 60 and now we select the cube and i want to do an animation with the cube so let's move the cube to one side g and let's hit i so location and rotation too and then we go to frame 40 again and move it to the other side and rotate it a little bit on the z axis so r and then z and rotate it like this we have a moving cube i think i'm gonna offset it a little bit so select these two key frames so that the camera and the cube don't move at the same time and then i want the cube to jump in the middle so between these two frames we hit g z and move the cube up so that it appears to jump like this we have a camera movement and a cube movement since we're finished with our animation don't forget to hit n again and disable camera to view Let's select our grease pencil object. Let's disable overlay. Try to uh, adjust it a little bit. Maybe add to the thickness randomness like this. So you choose also if you want to enable randomize or not. And then we'll add a build modifier. I have it at only 50 frames or maybe 40 frames. We have some kind of glitch here because they are not the same lines anymore. The cube rotated too much here while the lines are still in the phase of building what i'm gonna do is select the cube again and go here r z and move it like this so that we have the same faces showing here and also in the start i think i'm gonna rotate this in the other side like this maybe i delete this frame and then do the jumping again to do the compositing we will need to separate our background from our lines and also we will need to have the cube hidden let's create some view layers where in each view layer we will have some of the elements enabled and some of them disabled we need to put them in separate collections so we need the cube in its own collection m new collection call it object obj and then the grease pencil which is the lines in a separate collection to m again lines and then we need the background to be in its separate collection the background the plane here is parented to the camera but that's not a problem so let's select the plane and try to add it to our collection so m new collection bg for background okay twice and we have it here you see that now the background is in its own collection if we add the camera to the background's collection the compositing won't work and now we will add new layers in this section here on the top right so let's call this initial layer we call it all because it shows all the layers and then we create a new one let's hit here copy settings and then here we will just enable the background so in this layer we will hide the object collection and also the lines collection and then we name it background bg again here copy settings and we have another layer that we call lines and in this one unhide the object and hide the lines and we will add a holdout so you can go here and enable holdout from here 
or you can just right click the background collection and go to view layer set holdout and we do the same for the object so right click set holdout and now we can see only the lines it is still glitching i think because the lines when they go outside the camera field they disappear so the calculation gets messed up for the building so let's try to fix this select our grease pencil object in the line art modifier there's an option here under composition that's the overscan how far from the camera field the lines get drawn let's increase this value here 0.2 so this way none of the lines that go outside the camera field get erased and we have a smoother animation so now our work in the viewport is finished let's go to the compositing tab here we first enable use nodes we have two nodes here render layers which contains the view layer called all and we change that for background and we have this composite node so everything that goes here gets in the final render to be able to see what we are doing we will need to add a viewer node so shift a s for search view now we plug this to the image here and we can see our background. If you select lines, only the lines will be rendered. To zoom out of this image here, hit V on the keyboard and Alt V to zoom in. So let's select the background again and then we will duplicate this guy, Shift T. And here we put in lines and then we will add a mixing node. So Shift A, S mix this guy let's add it here and let's plug this one in the viewer our lines render layer we plug it in the second image this one is first and this one is second which means that uh, the background will be on the lowest layer and then the second layer will come above this is the second layer and it's black here and to make it transparent we will plug the alpha here to the fac let's hit f12 here so the compositor is basically just like photoshop we have layers this one has transparency and we enable it by plugging the alpha to the fact if you unplug it and then we lower the fact it's like we are lowering the opacity of this layer we already have the effect that we wanted but since we are here let's add one or two more effects to show you just how the compositor is similar to programs like Photoshop. Let's hit Shift A, S and search for contrast. Plug this node here to our background image. Lower the brightness a little bit, maybe minus 20. A little bit of contrast, maybe 10. And then let's add some color correction. I think it's color balance, yeah. I'm not very good at color correction, but let's just give it a yellowy color here. Let's copy this color here, Control C, Control V, Control V. So now we have this yellowish colors here. Maybe get it more to the orangey side. Maybe play with these, with the lightness. Yes, I think I like this look. So this is it. Now we can render our sequence. Let's go to the rendering panel here to output properties. Change from PNG to FFMPG video. For the encoding, we choose MPEG4 and no audio. And then you choose a file location. And then you get this guy here. But you can say, uh, thank you for watching and see you in another video. Peace.